Hey everyone, Ellery the Health Adventurer here, and I'm so excited to make a video about my one year raw vegan anniversary. So my raw vegan journey started one year ago and I've had so many improvements since then. And I guess I could say it's more like a high raw vegan because there was a period of time where I did do a little bit of cooked food um, just to gain some weight as I talked about in my last video. Uh, my 10 month raw vegan update. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. Like even in the last two months since I did my last video, there have been a lot of changes. So uh, there's a lot to share. And uh, I'll start off by kind of sharing um, just the little changes in my diet just since uh, my last video. So uh, if you haven't seen my last video, I had to um, eat some other things because I got down to like 85 pounds. I was a little scared and I just, I felt like I really needed something else besides apples because I was basically mono mealing apples for like three months because that was like all that was in season and I had so many sensitivities to uh, other things like imported fruits even because they get blanched, etc. So uh, I decided to try some other things because it was just getting, my energy was dropping and it was just getting really difficult. So um, once I incorporated some cooked vegan foods and some raw vegan foods, um, like basically, you know, I started off with basically everything vegan raw vegan that you could have. So uh, just, I would have like cauliflower and lentils and pea pasta. Um, I had a lot of zucchini pastas with uh, tomato sauce and stuff like that. And it, it went really well for a while, but then over time, uh, once I gained the weight, which that was the goal, uh, my body kind of indicated to me that hey, this is, we don't really like lentils anymore. And then, you know, nuts were becoming a problem again. And then, you know, I had to just gradually take a bunch of stuff out until I basically got down, you know, I got back down to just, uh, it was just vegetables and fruit, but then I had to eventually cut that out too, because then I would eat even just a small little veggie wrap with just some simple things in it uh, that would like kind of start, my hands would start kind of freaking out a little bit. So, and if you don't know my history, uh, I started the raw vegan diet because of uh, some symptoms that I started getting that were looking like lupus. Um, my hands would close up on me kind of like involuntarily. It wasn't, uh, it was really destructive to like my life uh, and just, you know, getting throughout the day. It was really difficult. Um, and I would get really fatigued in the sun, all kinds of things. Um, so now, thankfully, uh, you know, ever since I switched to the raw vegan diet, all that stuff pretty much just went away. My only triggers would be like stress. Um, and then, you know, for example, like eating vegetables, that's been a trigger for me a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'm back on 100% fruit. So I just did that little period of doing like some cooked and, uh, vegetable things for like a month. And the last month or so, I've actually been primarily eating blueberries and some strawberries, raspberries, cherries. Uh, so that's been really good. I know that sounds kind of like, wow, this really must be really expensive. And it is, but the way I look at it is that, first of all, it's a lot cheaper than going to the doctor. <laughs> um, but secondly, uh, it's, it's my health. Actually, first, it's my health. Uh, my health is the most important thing. It's a really important investment, uh, just to invest in ourselves and love ourselves. Uh, so, and I mean, a, a lot of people will ask me, you know, oh, what do you do for your job and stuff? You know, I, I just say right now, my full-time job is healing myself. So, but the exciting thing is as I'm getting a, a lot more energy overall and I'm just, I'm feeling so much better, the longer I continue and stick with this diet, uh, is the more that I can start giving back and start putting things out there that actually can help support myself financially. And uh, one of the things that I'm really excited for is putting out some eBooks with recipes that I've developed over this uh, course of time. Um, and I'm just so excited to put that out there for you guys. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm going to be also working a lot on my other project. Uh, it's called True Zero Emissions. It's my boyfriend and I work on this project 
that's another uh, thing that we're doing together. So I've got a couple things going on. And like I said, it's really exciting. And if you didn't notice, uh, <laughs> I am a musician. Uh, if you like the intro, <laughs> um, I might get back into doing some music things too. So that's really exciting. There's a lot of different avenues I can start to pursue again. Um, but I really, really needed to take this time to just pay attention to my body and just uh, trust that I could get better. That's really, really important. Sticking with that, that mindset is so, so important because I think if I would have just accepted that I couldn't heal or couldn't get better, I just wouldn't have. I, it wouldn't have opened up all these different uh, possibilities. So mindset is number one for sure. <laughs> so uh, on the note of, you know, eating uh, different things since, you know, that is kind of a new thing because most, most of my journey has been uh, eating primarily fruit. I wanted to talk about a little bit the difference between eating fruits and vegetables and how I experienced that differently. Um, so when I started this diet, the raw vegan diet, cooked foods and vegetables were really producing, seems to be producing a lot of symptoms that were too dramatic and kind of representing this like these lupus like symptoms that I just couldn't, I couldn't do those things. Um, cooked foods would make me uh, feel very depressed, very lethargic, and the raw vegetables would seem to trigger my hands. So when I was on, uh, when I lost the weight and I needed to gain weight though, I wasn't getting those symptoms at all, which is really interesting. And actually sometimes, for example, like if I ate celery, it tasted sweet to me. I mean, it was ridiculous. I was like, whoa, I've never tasted like celery like that before, you know? But then, you know, maybe if after eating a stalk of it or something, it wouldn't necessarily taste sweet anymore. So it wasn't that the actual celery tasted different, it's that what my perception of the food tastes different. So I think that's really uh, interesting to pay attention to how foods taste, um, at least, you know, for where I'm at and, you know, I mean, I've pretty much done a lot of cleaning in my body that I I am pretty in tune, I think, with like connecting taste and what my body actually needs. But it is really uh, important to know that the way that we use chemicals and stuff in foods and most processed foods and things like that can almost like manipulate our bodies into thinking we're getting something we're not. And so, you know, for example, if we were to eat candy or something that tastes like fruit, it might taste really good, but we're not necessarily going to feel good from it. So that's something that's important to remember, like if you're just getting started on trying to get a little bit healthier that, you know, taste, I mean, fruit is always pretty much going to taste good to everybody. So you can't really go wrong with fruit unless you have some sort of an allergy or something. But yeah, generally speaking, it's like if you can incorporate more fruit in your diet, like chances are it's probably going to be good. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it can produce some detox symptoms if you start out with a lot. For me, um, you know, I found that uh, my energy levels, like with doing a lot of detox, would sometimes go down. So you might find if you start incorporating more raw fruits and vegetables that initially the energy might go down, uh, but then later you should see a you know, resurgence and, and like a new energy that you never experienced before. Um, and that's actually kind of uh, another thing I really want to talk about is the energy levels and just how, um, how different foods have affected my energy levels. So um, when I incorporated more vegetables for that short period of time, when I needed to, I did notice an increase in my energy, which was really interesting. And I actually also noticed that my skin looked better too. Um, so it seemed like, I don't know if that's because there was, I guess it's probably a mixture of things. It's probably number one, it probably was slowing down some detox a little bit. Uh, so it wasn't pushing as much stuff out of my skin. Um, but number two, probably also had some important vitamins and minerals and things that were helpful for healing as well. Um, however, like I said, over time, my body wasn't, it was reacting the same way with the raw uh, veg vegetables and the cooked vegetables as it was at the beginning of my raw vegan journey when it couldn't tolerate it either. Uh, and so, you know, now like I've noticed more acne coming up again. 
um, as you can kind of, you know, see I have a little bit, but you can see, you know, generally speaking though, my skin isn't really that red though. Like it's just these couple little spots coming out, but my skin overall, even the scarring and stuff looks pretty clear. So it's still definitely in a positive, you know, trajectory here, which is really exciting. But yeah, it was really interesting to see that like, for the first time in my life, I really didn't need as much sleep as I used to. And I've always been the kind of person who would wake up, uh, you know, after eight or 10 hours of sleep and, maybe, and still feel tired, like consistently. So, and that's generally a, a sign of like adrenal fatigue. I definitely know that my adrenals have been taxed a lot in my life. <laughs> just with a lot of stress, overworking myself. Sorry if I'm bumping the mic here. Um, and yeah, and I've had to learn how to really find, you know, my zen. And that's taken a lot of practice, a lot of rest too, honestly. And for the first time, it was like, whoa, like I could sleep like six hours and I was like, I felt pretty rested. I didn't really notice a difference. And Whereas in the past, if I had slept six hours, I would have just been like having a horrible day from only, only sleeping that much. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And then as I started to um, incorporate more fruit again and then just go to only fruit again, uh, initially maybe there was a little bit of an energy drop, but lately I've been noticing like in the last couple of days, I've had an amazing amount of energy and it's been like, I, I like energy that I didn't even know was possible. Um, basically, the let's see, two days ago, I think I slept like three or four hours, and it's like it was like four in the morning or something, and I was just like up and doing stuff, and I was like, I just don't feel like going to sleep yet. Like it just didn't feel like something I wanted to do. So, and it wasn't like out of it didn't necessarily feel like it was out of stress, and I don't think it was out of stress. Uh, but it's like, I, I slept a couple hours and then I got up and like, I started doing more stuff and it was just like, I felt good and I actually had like a very kind of like, I don't know. I just, I felt very in tune, like with the earth and stuff that day. And I felt in tune with some emotional stuff. Like I was able to let go of some emotional stuff, which was really cool. Um, so yeah. It, and then I think like the day after that, I only slept another like six hours or something. Um, but then last night I did sleep more. I slept probably, I actually probably slept eight or 10 hours and then I did lay in bed a lot today just to like, I was just like processing a lot of stuff. So it is like kind of fluctuating, but it's really interesting. I mean, in the past I would have, I don't know if I would have ever experienced a night where I had three or four hours of sleep and the next day I just felt totally like I slept a full night. Like that's, crazy, you know? So it's really exciting just to see some of those shifts starting to happen. Um, it is something that I, I could expect might happen with, with this kind of a journey. Um, just, you know, listening to a lot of different people who are raw vegans or fruitarian or even breatharian, uh, a lot of them will say their energy level has increased so that they need less sleep and actually, I think Lissa from Lissa's Raw Food Romance, I believe that she has said on um, her videos that she only needs like four hours of sleep and she's a raw vegan, eats nuts and seeds and all that. So I think it's different for everybody, but it's really, like I said, it's really cool, especially for someone who has throughout their life every day pretty much woken up and felt tired. So that's pretty cool. Um, so speaking of breatharianism, I know I did kind of touch on it in the last video, um, but it is a path that I am kind of uh, I'm interested in, and I'm I'm uh, I consider it to be kind of a spiritual uh, journey. So if I find that I need less food, which is another thing I've actually sometimes I do have days where I really don't need to eat very much. Um, then I just kind of go with it and trust it and I don't worry about, oh my gosh, did I get enough calories or whatever? Because there are days where I will only eat like maybe 800 calories or something like that and I feel fine. But there are other days that I will still eat maybe 1500 calories or something and I'm not really, you know, I'm not a tall or big person, you know, so I don't really need a lot of calories in the first place and the kind of uh, conventional sense of looking at calories, but, um, 
yeah, it's just, it's kind of cool to see a lot of these shifts happening. So, uh, yeah, this journey for me, like this one year raw vegan anniversary, raw vegan anniversary is really like, um, it's kind of like, it's a healing journey and I wouldn't label myself necessarily as raw vegan because like I said, it's, it's just to give people a general idea, but really the core of everything that's happening is, yes, there's a physical element of the food and the diet and it's really important, but it's really also, now it's like a really more of a spiritual one for me, even more so. So it's both, but like I said, it's turning more into a spiritual journey for me, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, so like I said, with, I mean, I think even like the singing and stuff, getting back into music and being, um, more connected with that again, because I did take a pretty big break from that. And, uh, you know, I think that that is also spiritual as well. And just getting into that creative mode is a really big part of having that sort of feeling of unlimited energy, because actually, if you think about it, we've all kind of had those moments where, Maybe we're doing something creative and we don't feel like we need to eat or sleep or whatever. And I feel like that is part of tapping into that sort of pranic energy that breatharians talk about. It's it's the same thing. It's all there. I think we've all experienced pieces of it. Um, but having it consistently uh, and as like a foundation, I think that's, that's key and not where it's, um, I guess, coming from maybe a more calm place is, is I think where... It will come from in the future. So anyhow, um, I want to talk a little bit about the weight changes um, that I did have just again for a second. Um, I did throw out my scale or not throw it out. I, I returned it because it wasn't working properly. And then I decided that I didn't want to get another one because I don't really feel like that's a big indicator of health. I feel like it would just distract me from listening to my body and just kind of trusting my journey and my intuition. So I do think it was necessary when I did uh, incorporate other foods. I feel like it was necessary then to, you know, kind of maybe just, just get an idea of where I was at and maybe that was kind of like the thing that I needed to, to get myself to, oh gosh, like as a wake-up call to like, eat some other things, but the main thing that was sort of wrong, I guess you could say, or like an indicator of something being wrong was that I wasn't feeling fulfilled, I wasn't feeling satisfied, and I was losing weight like every day. Right now, I'm like pretty much maintaining and my legs look so much healthier than they did before. It, I put on weight where I, it needed to go when I ate the food that I ate, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so, uh, another thing I have noticed just in general over this year, and even from going vegan a year before that, so that was like two years ago, I have noticed a lot more muscle definition. So, if you check that out, woo! <laughs> I, you know, by the way, I don't actually work out. Like, I haven't worked out because I'm in a healing mode and I don't feel the desire or uh, I don't feel like it would actually help me right now to work out. So, and I feel like that probably has to do with like producing acidity and needing, also needing rest because I mean, when we work out, it's like, it's kind of like a little bit of a stress. And so I think my adrenals and everything just need, you know, rest and stuff. So, but I don't know, now that I'm getting more energy, maybe I'll start doing some more gentle exercises or something, maybe some yoga or something like that. Uh, also been riding these little um, electric scooters around. It's like a tiny little bit of like a exercise, like because you're just like standing on it. 
they've got them. They're called bird scooters in Los Angeles, and they're actually really cool. And I think if you haven't heard of bird, you should check them out because it's actually one way to reduce the smog in the air, which is really important for health, uh, especially in LA, because that is a big uh, contributor to health problems. So yeah, check out, actually you can get a free ride, uh, not free ride, I take that back. It's $5 off your first ride if you sign up with the referral link below. So you can do that if you're interested and you have them in the area. Um, but anyway, that's just a side note. So, um, but yeah, I, I think things like that, like really gentle things would be good for me to start. And then, you know, I can go back into, you know, more normal types of exercises. So, uh, I also want to talk about the effects on the sun, how that's kind of changed over the course of the year. Um, so when I, before I even went raw vegan and I was really in like my worst state, the sun would knock me out for like a week and it was really, really bad. Like if I had 10 minutes of sun exposure, it would just completely, I'd be in excruciating pain and for the next week I would have to recover from that and I would have to rebuild my energy. Uh, now if I get knocked out by the sun, which Actually, I think when I ate vegetables, I was able to eat, or not able to eat, able to be in the sun a little bit more. I would say I could be out in the sun for maybe an hour or two and it was okay, which is really cool. Really, really cool. Um, and now that I'm back on fruit, I don't know if it's like because the sun is detoxing me, but I noticed that I get kind of wiped out, like, like I'll feel kind of depressed. And then it'll bring up a lot of emotional stuff because I'll feel really vulnerable like once I get wiped out and then it just brings up all this stuff when I feel like I can't like access my brain. It just makes me feel like, oh my God, like, you know, is someone going to help me? Or am I going to be abandoned? Like it just brings up a whole bunch of stuff. So I, right now I'm kind of avoiding the sun uh, for the time being, but I do think that I will be able to be out in the sun again regularly uh, in the future. So um, but yeah, I, overall, even if I do get knocked out like that, I can recover within, you know, maybe a couple hours or a day. It doesn't take as long and it's not as scary. So I think that's really, really cool and awesome. Um, so I have developed though more sensitivities to certain things. Um, one of them being like senses, like, like smells and chemical smells. Uh, there are some stores that I can't even shop in. It's just, I will not, I could not go in there without feeling like it's like suicidal. It just feels so bad. <laughs> and I won't name any stores, but basically what affects me, it seems to be like really strong floor cleaners. And I noticed like the last time it was like, it had this like orange, like a fake orange scent. And it really seemed to kind of like trick my brain into thinking that, oh, it's okay if I'm just in here for a few minutes because it's like fruit. No, <laughs> it like completely wiped me out. Like it was really, it was really bad because I think I had to like drive home from somewhere and it was just like kind of far and yeah, it just, it was really bad. So I just prefer to shop online for most things. Um, but there are some stores I can still go in it's just that, like, if they use really strong floor cleaners, I just won't go in them. So that's one thing. Um, I noticed, I also had noticed I had, like, um, I was doing some projects, and I was using a hot glue gun, and that was probably, like, the worst experience I had with, like, a chemical smell, because it's, like, the vapors of the glue were just so toxic. It was, like, Again, it just made me feel like I didn't have access to my brain. It was like a neurotoxin or something like that. But it was like, it was like the the deepest feeling of that, of all the experiences I had had. So, yeah. So there's a lot of things I'm going to be avoiding also in the future. Like, I'm probably not going to go to hair salons and stuff like that because there's so many chemicals. I actually did cut my own hair, which was really cool. I learned how to do that from, like watching all these YouTube videos and stuff. And I actually made a playlist if you're interested in doing that yourself too. Um, but I did kind of like trim up my own hair. I put some layers in it. Um, I actually did some vlogs in the last like two months between um, my last update video and now. 
Uh, I posted one of them, but there is a video that talks about um, me cutting my hair and you can kind of like see my haircut and stuff, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, I am going to be posting those, as another side note, I'm going to be posting those up too. I just wanted to get this video out and done first because it's a big deal. It's my one year anniversary, but then I am going to be rolling out those videos still too. So keep a lookout for those. Um, yeah, but as far as other sensitivities that I developed, um, just the vibe in different places and different areas and being sensitive to that energy. Um, it was really crazy. I was in a, a city, actually, I'll just, I'll just say it. I was in Venice, um, Venice, California, and Venice, sometimes I've noticed that there can be a little bit of a vibe of, like, aggression there, unfortunately. Um, I think it's cool because there's a lot of creative stuff there, which is really exciting. But then for some reason, it's also kind of paired with this, like, kind of aggressive attitude sometimes. And there's some days in, are worse than others, and some days I don't really notice it. But this one particular day, I went there, I was with my boyfriend, and... It's like I started feeling, and, and maybe the sun too was kind of affecting me, but I was like feeling all these really um, kind of like dark emotions and stuff. And I was, it was like bringing up a lot of stuff and I was clearing through a lot of stuff. But I, my energy, by the end of all that, it's like my energy just dipped so low. And I was just like, I was kind of like, it's like I was falling asleep or something. And we were driving back home. We we're going up towards Santa Monica and it's like, as soon as we, it was so weird. Okay, so we're in the car, we've got air conditioning going, and it's it's an older car, so it's like, it's got like a dial for the air conditioning, so it's got, it's like on the one side, it's got the blue for the cold, and then the other side, it's got the red for the hot, and we're like turning up, or not turning up, the, the air conditioning dial was set to like halfway in the blue, so, and that was like kind of actually warm because we didn't want air conditioning on. I think we were a little cold, I think. Yeah, that was what it was. And then we went to Santa Monica and all of a sudden it's like once we hit that border, it got really, it got cold and instantly it's like my boyfriend and I both, like our energy just went up like instantly. And it seemed like it had to do, it could have, it seemed like it had to do with the vibe because it's a weird thing, and a lot of people will just kind of dismiss that and be like, oh, well, that's just a coincidence, or, you know, it's just one of those... Uh, they're just, like, scientifically explained it away as nothing important, basically. But what I take away from that is that cold, from what I understand from Dr. Robert Morse, which, if you haven't checked him out, I feel like you should check him out, because he's got a lot of good info. Check out his earlier videos. Um, get a foundation of stuff. But, um, yeah... <laughs> it's uh cold is supposed to be kind of more alkaline than heat it's more um I guess heat is kind of dehydrating so and I feel that if the vibe in a place like Venice where there's a little bit of aggression or something like that that will create heat and if you think about it if you get really angry yourself it can produce a lot of heat in your body it's it's actually there is heat in your body. Your face can get red. Um, so I feel like that can, if there's a general vibe like that in a place, like that could kind of make it a little bit more acidic. And so the the dial where it was set at, all of a sudden it's like that was no longer, when we got to Santa Monica, all of a sudden that setting was cold. So it's kind of interesting because Santa Monica is more is a little more touristy, a little more family friendly, things like that. So I feel like that had a lot to do with it. And I'm, by the way, I'm not putting Venice down. It's, you know, everyone has uh, stuff to clear through and aggression is there, you know, sometimes for a reason. It's, it comes from trauma, etc. So I, I don't want to put Venice down. That's why originally I didn't want to say anything, but just for the sake of the clarity of the story and so you could understand what I was talking about, I just wanted to put that out there. But that's just like my little side note disclaimer, like I don't want to put Venice down. Um, cause I actually do like going there sometimes, but, um, but yeah, the vibe sometimes <laughs> makes it hard. So, um, so yeah, that's just one thing that I noticed the sensitivity to. Um, but yeah, other things, other little things, um, I noticed, so I have these cysts on my head and they're like, I don't know, they're kind of big. They were big. They were really, they were really big before I had like three or four of them or something. Uh, those have like 
gone down a lot since having started this diet, which is really cool. Um, cysts are something that have run in my family. Like they've always been, um, like on my mom's side, which is also confirming of Dr. Robert Morse's, um, uh, I guess his perspective of things, which is that the mother, um, is where you get your lymphatic system from. It always comes from the mother. And that's definitely consistent because my grandmother on my mom's side, she had these cysts like that would show up not just on the head, but that that's kind of like the common place in my family, um, but also on joints, um, on ovaries, things like that. So with my grandmother, then my mom had it, um, my sisters had it, my mom's brother had it. Um, we've all had it in different places. So I've had actually, I've had cysts on my ovaries before, but they went away on their own. Um, but the ones on my head, they've always been pretty much consistently, they would always just get bigger and bigger. Um, my family, my whole family, they always just get them removed, like, surgically. I've never done that, and I've never wanted to do that, um, or felt a need to. So, you know, but ever since I've done the raw vegan diet, it's like, I noticed they do get smaller. Um, they do fluctuate, though. Sometimes I've noticed, like, you know, I actually, I'll do this thing called, uh, it's called trigger point. Um, it's like a, it's like you hold, you kind of hold your hand like on a spot, like on a, where there's muscle tension and the nerves just, it kind of like tells the nerves, just putting like a little bit of light, light pressure. It just tells the nerves to relax and to relax that muscle. So I just, I actually do that sometimes on like the actual spots, like where they're, they're hard. Like there's one like there, you can't really, you can't see it, but because my hair is over it, but, but yeah, I have them. And, uh. Yeah, they just, they, I notice they get smaller when they do that, but sometimes they'll come back, and, uh, yeah, it's just kind of, oops, I keep hitting this thing, <laughs> sorry, you guys, hope it's not too distracting, but, but yeah, anyways, it's just another little thing that I've noticed, um, you know, but the bigger stuff that I've noticed, like I said, just the general improvement of my energy, that's, like, the biggest thing that I'm so happy about, because now, like I said, I have more energy to do the things I really want to do. And like I said, I'm really excited to start getting like ebooks and stuff out there because I want to give back to you guys too and I want to offer you guys something. So like I said, just keep a lookout for that. That is coming your way. Um, and like I said, I'm doing this other project with my boyfriend with True Zero Emissions. Um, if you're interested in reducing emissions and stuff like that, I think you should check that channel out too. Um, and by the way, like I was saying, if you want to try out that bird electric scooter and have a cheap and fun way to get around town that's not that's also going to help reduce the emissions because it's electric and electric stuff can be, you know, powered by solar and stuff, which is really cool. Um it can really be a, a zero emission technology. Yeah, I'd say totally try it out. Uh give it a shot. It's you can get $5 off your first ride. Uh, I'll put the link below for that, the referral link, so check that out, and, um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much all for this video, um, I'm really, like I said, I couldn't be happier with how things are going, um, I'm just so happy that I didn't give up, that's so important, um, oh, one other thing I want to mention, <laughs> so the emotional stuff, it is a really, really big part, an important part of healing, and, it's not always easy to work through emotional things, but I, my boyfriend and I have done some relationship therapy that's helped reduce stress in our lives because stress has been a really big trigger um, for like the lupus-like symptoms and stuff that I've experienced. And that's helped reduce that a lot because there's there were certain things that would come up in our relationship where neither of us had clarity. We weren't able to solve it ourselves. And it wasn't until we saw a therapist that they were able to kind of hold and hear each of our, whatever we were going through, and also basically create like a different conversation uh, that we could witness, uh, the other partner could witness. And it kind of helps slow the thoughts down uh, and make everything just a little bit easier to manage. So, so definitely, you know, never be ashamed of going to therapy or you know, you don't have to ever tell anyone you're going to therapy, but you don't need to be ashamed of admitting that either, because I think a lot of people can feel that. But, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that because that is also a big part of, like I said, the spiritual and emotional journey for me. 
I found it so helpful because we can have different people can have different meanings behind what they're saying. And when you can really understand like the meaning of what people mean, and even if they are coming across as aggressive or rude or whatever, when you can start to have compassion for that other person where you can say, okay, I, I know where they're coming from. This isn't really who they are. This is just a moment in time where this is coming out. And when you know that other person is also working on themselves, that's the key, um, then it makes it safe and then, then it can be worked on. So, but there are times when, you know, like I said, when someone isn't willing to work on themselves where you might have to remove yourself from a situation, but my boyfriend and I, like I said, we really care about each other and we're, we ultimately, I think we really feel like we add to each other's lives and that's why we want to work on it. And it's been worth doing the therapy for that too. So, so anyways, like I said, check out the links in the description for the, for the bird ride and stuff. And, um, keep an eye out for ebooks coming soon. Oh, check out my, I have a recipe, a little recipe that I did. I'm going to be doing more, uh, videos, Beethoven in the kitchen. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Um, so obviously I'm a musician and you know, I named it Beethoven in the kitchen because like I'm a musician in the kitchen <laughs> and I'm making all these recipes, but also because the majority of the recipes that I made, I actually made without even being able to taste them. And Beethoven was deaf. So he made music, not music that he could hear, but music that maybe he could feel. And a lot of the recipes that I've made have been recipes that I could smell, um, but not necessarily taste because they would cause maybe reactions for me. But my boyfriend really enjoys them. He, and he taste tests them on my videos and stuff. So I have, I have one video that I started with that kind of a theme, that Beethoven in the kitchen theme. Um, but I'm going to have a lot more of those coming your way. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. And it is cool that during that time when, uh, you know, I needed to gain weight, I actually did get to try some of my recipes, which is really cool. But I am back to not eating those things now, so I probably won't be eating them for a while. Um, but yeah, I am excited that I did actually get to try some of them and kind of fulfill that part of me that really did want to try them. But now I can share them with you guys and I'm excited to do that and, you know, Maybe one day I'll get to try them again, but for now I'm pretty happy with how I feel and the energy that I'm experiencing. So anyways, I will see you in the next video. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I will see you next time. Bye.